Hey everyone, I haven't done my reading yet today or my video. Um, and I forgot my glasses at work. So I thought I'd just kind of roll with this video and kind of do what I do when I'm reading on my own and just kind of let it run. <clears throat> I'm on John chapter 19. Can I have a can I have a highlighter when you read the word? Okay, so when Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, you know, that's interesting. He he knew Jesus was innocent, and he still sent him to be scourged. Okay, verse 2, And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him... him on him a purple robe and uh, become really dependent on those cheater glasses um, then he said then they said hail king of the Jews and they struck him with their hands you know I was um, thinking you know a couple weeks ago and I made this point on my one of my blogs recently that um, you know there's some some men that would rather face physical beating and torture than they would being humiliated and mocked and disrespected. Because um, that's, you know, we're kind of wired that way. You know, that's why in the Word, it's like not surprising, the Word knows, God knows what, how we're wired and how women are wired. That's why it's interesting that, is it Ephesians? And it says, um, um, men love your wives because the number one need of women is that they feel loved by their husbands. And it says women respect your husbands because that is our number one need. Typically, I mean, for the most part, um, men have a real problem, most of them, with being disrespected. Um, so anyway, that's just a side little tickler there for you that made me, uh, I was thinking of. Um, okay, verse 4, Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. To which I'd say, well, why'd you scourge him then? Right? Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, Behold the man. Therefore when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. You know what? No, no, yeah, that's right. Did I do 19, 18 yesterday? Where is it? Yeah, you know what? I did, I did chapter 19 yesterday, but I didn't do a lot of highlighting. Not, the, not that I shouldn't have, it's just that I... Um, I just kind of did it quick. So I'm, I'm just going to keep rolling with it. I'm supposed to be doing 20 today. So, okay. The Jews answered him, We have the, have a law, and according to our... Okay, wait, hold on. Verse 6. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault with, in him. The Jews answered, we have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was, was the more afraid, and went again into the, I don't know how to pronounce this word, praetorium, and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. I love that. He ain't even going to acknowledge it. Then Jesus said to him, 
Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, you have no power. Let me highlight that. Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you or release you? And Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered you to me deliver me to you, has a greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat, sat down on the judgment seat in a place that is called the, pa the pavement. But in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was a preparation day in the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, away, from, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. No, your king is your father the devil, right? You're bowing down to a king. You're either bowing down to King Jesus or you're bowing down to the prince of this world and everything that falls underneath it. If you're bowing down to money and fortune and fame, the rest, it doesn't matter. It all falls under Satan's umbrella. For there's only one real king to bow down to, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, King Jesus, right? Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the Place of the Skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews and to Pilate, therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the but he said, I am the king of the Jews. So he wanted them to change it from the king of the Jews to Jesus saying, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each, to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top, to one, from the top in one piece. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Whose it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for clothing they cast lots. And if that one prophecy doesn't get fulfilled, then really, you know, every prophecy is fulfilled to with 100% accuracy, right? Okay, therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of, is it Clopas? C-L-O-P-A-S, Clopas? And Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples, whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to this disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her 
to his own home. You know, this is one thing I'm, I'm very curious about. When I read this another earlier, um, I was reading a little bit of it earlier today. <clears throat> and um, that part kind of struck me. Where's Joseph? Does anybody have an answer for me on that? Why is my why is Mary going to the home of John? Is Joseph dead or is he gone or what's the deal? Okay, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, the scripture that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, "I thirst." Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there and they filled the sponge with the sour wine, put it on a hyssop, on hyssop and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. You know, I think that, that right there, you hear it to me as real silly doctrine where people say that some preachers will say Jesus went for three days to hell to be tortured and brutalized and make payment for our sins and be redeemed. And, and the, you've, I've even heard silliness to say that, that Satan and the demons had their way with Jesus. No. Jesus just said, it is finished. Now, what he did in those three days, you know, whatever it was, and, and I've heard people preach on this, and I'm not versed on it enough to be able to say, but preaching to those that are in um, being held, I don't, I don't really um, totally get it all, but I know this. He said on the cross, it is finished. That doesn't mean he's got to go to hell to be tortured and sub submissive to Satan and the demons. It is finished, he said. And by the way, that is a, a legal term. When somebody served their sentence and they, the debt has been paid, their debt, criminal debt or civil debt to society. Um, I heard this preached years ago, but they put on the cell door what their crime is or what they're doing time for, whatever the deal is. And then when their time is, time is served, there's a, it's stamped it is finished it, or finished or whatever, you know, you get the idea, but it's a legal term that that transaction or that, that um, sentence is, is, is done. Um, so this legal transaction from Jesus is our legal, a legal transaction. He purchased us back. He paid our sin debt for those that have surrendered our life to him. Okay. Verse 31. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the, that Sabbath day was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might, that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and wine came out. I'm sorry, blood, blood and water came out. And he was seen, and he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture that says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph and of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus and here, not since chapter 3 do we hear this name mentioned. As Nic and Nicodemus, whom at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing the mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices and as a custom of the Jewish burial. burial or, 
is to Jesus to bury. So I'm running out of time. God bless you all. We'll see you.